Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. Great to be here, as always. Love being able to check in on the weekends. Every Saturday and Sunday, we go live with our Cabral House Call podcast. This is the weekend edition of the Cabral Concept, where we're answering our community's questions each and every weekend. I'm excited to dive right into the questions this week. So, Basically, if you're new to the show, all things health, wellness, uh, weight loss, weight gain, anti-aging, longevity, healthy biohacking that we're going to be getting much more into in this new year. And I'm super excited about that because just like you, I'm always trying to level up. I really am. It's like, all right, what what can I do for this coming new year that's maybe an add-on to do what I'm doing right now? And, And the thing is, I don't have any more hours in my day just like you. So what I'm doing is I'm either replacing things or I do something what's called habit stacking that I teach inside of the IHP Mastery. And a lot of our IHPs will know about that. And that is basically, while I'm doing something already, can I do an add-on on top of that? Not multitasking, but basically stack it on top of what I'm already doing. And that's exactly what I'm doing for the new year. So stay tuned for it. Stay tuned for that. I'll be teaching this come, uh, well, just about four weeks from now. All right. So let's dive in today's show. Um, it looks like the first question, again, I, I don't do any prep work for the show. So you're always getting my unbiased, just in the moment thought on your question. And, and I love being able to do that. So um, this first one's from Rob. And it says, hi, doc, me again. Sorry, forgot to ask about my blood sugar. I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for about two months now and was shocked how I was basically pre-diabetic. Fasting glucose was about 120 and it could spike all the way up to 180 after eating my prep meal, which could involve something like lentils, sweet potatoes and peas, plus olive oil. I've gone to a completely starch-free diet where I'm eating plenty of cruciferous vegetables, pulses, 20 grams of uh, plus protein in every meal and healthy fats, no fruits, grains, starches such as sweet potato. I do have a cheat meal per week and anytime I try to add starch, my blood glucose spikes again. Am I supposed to be on a starch-free diet forever? Why is my fasting glucose still around 100 when I'm not eating any starches? This is so confusing, bearing in mind that I've already get in 10,000 steps and I'm generally moving after meals, washing dishes, please help, I'm so lost. Okay, yeah, happy to help with this without a doubt. And again, like I don't have a ton of information in front of me as to uh, rob all of your different vitals, you know, the different biomarkers. So I don't know like how much sleep you're getting per day, what you're doing. Uh, like if, if you do cardio, does that then lower your blood sugar? Yes or no? So, you know, because I'm looking to say, and I've got a couple shows actually, Rob, I think these shows will really help you. So let's go to it right now. Um, Episode 2498, using exercise to block, to block fat storage. And then I went over um, 24, 2504. So 2498, 2504, are you glycogen depleted and should you be? Because I don't think the issue is just um, starches alone. You're obviously not getting the exact results you want just by eliminating starches. You're simply reducing your total load uh, of carbohydrates and easily digestible carbohydrates. So again, I don't know your height. I don't know your weight, but I understand where you're coming from. I'd want to be getting in an intermittent fast, but I would certainly be doing uh, potentially again, like potentially a 21 day functional medicine detox. I would potentially be looking at cell membrane dynamics. That's always what I'm looking at whenever someone is like closer to pre-diabetic and doing a lot of healthy things. Um, And what I mean by that is that the actual phospholipid uh, membrane or or, um, bilipid membrane, so basically bilipid, think of it as like soft fats and hard fats, omega-6s and omega-3s. It's not a great way to look at it, but it is is true. It's a bilipid membrane. And that means um, some things pass in and some things don't. And if the, the lipid membrane is actually too many sterols or uh, let's think of it as hard fats, then there's not enough space to actually be able to let that cell breathe and to actually get the glucose into the cell. So oftentimes that can be from, uh, that can be from too many saturated fats 
Um, Because I know we go like, so that's not always the reason, right? Like, so for example, cells can become too oxidative, too much free radical damage, too much breaking down from too many polyunsaturated fats. And that's that's a lot of the the world, right? But then people then sometimes push in the other direction. They say, okay, I'm only going to eat then um, butter, lard, beef tallow, meats, um, coconut oil, like only saturated fats. And I think we have to be careful. Like it's always a balance. And that's what I try to preach to people. So we're really looking at cell membrane dynamics. The, the thing though, Rob, too, is this takes about 12 to 16 weeks to repair, like to fix. So please don't think that it's going to be fixed in two or three weeks because you're doing the right things. It actually just takes time because you need all of those red blood cells to actually turn over. And so that happens in 120 days total. Now it's weighted over 90 days because they're turning over every day, every minute actually. Uh, um, so, yeah, keep moving in the right direction. It seems I'd be worried about like no fruit in your diet, like not even a cup of wild berries. But, um, I, you know, the thing is, I can't give you exact directions. That's the thing is, it would actually be unethical for me to give you a diet based on five sentences. But if possible, you know, run your labs. The most pop, the most popular or the, the one I'd recommend the most to you is the stress mood and metabolism, at least to start. All right. So that's where I would look like look at those cortisol levels, look at the thyroid, et cetera. All right. Anonymous is up next. Hello, I'm 38 years old and my DEXA scan came back with upsetting results. I have a negative two T score in my spine, which is significantly decreased from two years ago. I'm wondering if you know anything about Cal's bone uh, supplement or IMD supplements. I am worried about putting things in my body that I don't know about the potential side effects, especially long-term. At the same time, I'm working on my nutrition. I'm working with an endocrinologist for my hormones and my thyroid, which have been a mess for years. I'm also working on increasing the amount of calcium in my diet, making sure I have adequate levels of vitamin D and K. Any feedback about cow's bone or uh, suggestions I can make to reverse bone loss? Also, you're amazing and use many, I use many of your supplements, including your DNS, Adrenal Suit, Thyroid Support. Thanks for all you do. All right. Thank you, Anonymous. I appreciate you. You're amazing. So let's see. I have no idea what cow's bone is. Like, never never heard of it. Um, but let me just tell you what, what we do. So it's not just about supplementation. All right. So what would I do? Like, yes, right away. So again, if you haven't read my book, The, the Rain Barrel Effect, please do read that. It's free. You just pay for the shipping at stephencabral.com. You can buy it on Amazon as well. So it's not that you can't. I donate 100% of the profit to charity. So it's not like, you know... I. Anyway, I just want people to read the book. That's just the way it is because it's exactly what I do in practice. Because I have something called the de-stress protocol and I teach you exactly what I do in my practice. So diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset. So yes, supplements is one of the eight. And we would use the daily nutritional support, the omega-3 support. We would do the daily probiotic support. And we would do the daily fruit and vegetable blend. And then we would do what's called the daily you know, bone support. Okay, so... Yes, we would do all of those things. The daily nutritional support contains your um, vitamin K2 and it contains a lot of your calcium, all those things. And your daily bone support obviously then contains your calcium. Um, So all of that's taken care of. The only thing extra you would add in is some liquid vitamin D drops, not mega doses. Don't please uh, be careful if your endocrinologist recommends high dosages of vitamin D. Most adults need two to 4,000 IUs per day. That's about 50 to 100 micrograms. I go over all of that on previous podcasts. Please do check those out. You don't want high-dose supplements in general uh, for a long period of time. Short period of time to boost immune system, maybe not long period of time. It can actually decalcify the bones. Not a good idea. Okay, so um, your issue, well, we, we don't know what it is, right? Like, is it inflammation in the body? Is it too lower level of calories? Is it too much workout without then not enough for recovery in terms of nutrition, et cetera. Not enough protein in your diet. Too much stress leaching calcium from the bones with higher levels of adrenaline or norepinephrine and cortisol. So there's all sorts of reasons why you might be losing that bone mass. Not enough strength training at least twice a week. Women need, uh, and men as well, for strength training after the age of 27 years old. But you want to do it before then because before 27, you can actually build and build and build more bone mass. Then after that, not so much. You can maintain, but difficult to build more. Now, you could get out, very well could get back some of the bone, uh, but typically not be able to build more from your base, all right? So that's everything in a nutshell, and uh, hopefully that's a good place to get started. But please do, fix your thyroid levels, fix your stress, fix your nutrition, because all of that plays into stress and bone loss, okay? Casey says, hello, I tried to submit a question, and it keeps rejecting my submission, so I was hoping I could send it here. Thank you so much for anything you can do to help. Here's my question. All right, so 
uh, we personally don't reject any submissions. You can write anything you want, like literally write anything you want. Um, so maybe it was just a, a computer glitch. There's sometimes glitches always in the matrix. All right. So it says, uh, do you have any recommendations for Chalazian cysts in the eye? My poor mama keeps getting them and they're doing repeat surgeries monthly and putting her on antibiotics each time and say it's just part of life, which has to be BS. I'm going to sign her up to be a client with you, but hoping there is something she can do in the meantime. Thanks for all you do. Okay. And just keep in mind too, that um, I don't get these questions till about 12 weeks after you submit them because that's how big the queue is now to ask these questions online. Okay. So Chalazian cysts we see all the time in our practice. Typically it's a growth. It's a little benign cyst that happens on top of the eyelid. It could be anywhere around the eye. Um, we see it in our practice directly related to viral base load, stress on the body, higher levels of stress, not enough magnesium body. We see it with gut-based toxicity or toxicity in general. So viral load, high levels of stress, oxidative stress, the body can't keep up with the emotional or physical kind of onslaught on the body, weakening it, and then we can end up with these Chalazian cysts. What can you do? Again, please go back to the de-stress protocol. I would love you to, to run the big five labs with your mother so we can look at gut function, we can look at heavy metals, we can look at high levels of stress, low levels of um, adaptive function in the body, such as your B vitamins, your vitamin C, like those things your mom's probably depleted on. Just getting her on something like the daily foundational um, protocol is probably gonna be life-changing. I'd love her to do a 21-day functional medicine detox. There's obviously so much we can do, so much we can do. And so, um, yeah, but we need to start the foundation. Again, it's always foundational-based. That's what it's all about. All right, Mary's up next. After reading and listening to all of your info on hair loss, trying to get to the root cause of mine, overall scalp thinning, in your experience, is it possible to experience hair loss after adding T3 medication? It does say it's a potential side effect. I'm already on NP thyroid, and, and then, um, so again, if you wanna read all these questions, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2514 for today's show. So um, she talks about basically when she added in her T3, uh, it lowered her THH levels, um, and then she says, is this a possibility? The other is that they started uh, bioidentical hormone replacement testosterone at about the same time, and the total testosterone doubled. And so I'm at a loss, so trying to narrow down the delayed reaction to hair loss. Okay, so again, I've had to look deep into this. Uh, as I shared with you before, I lost 50%, more than 50% of the hair on the top of my head, the entire scalp and back of my head. Uh, I go through that at stephencabral.com forward slash hair dash loss. And again, I'm not a hair loss company. I'm not, hey, look at me before and after. I, I don't, honestly, I don't care about any of that. I'd rather not even put it out there. But so many people asked from um, COVID and other things that I said, listen, same thing happened to me. Here's why it happened. Here's all the different reasons for hair loss. We've been working with this in our practice now for over 15 years. This is everything that I know of, both natural and conventional, that works to stop hair loss and regrow hair. Will it work in every single case? No, not in every case for men. Almost every case for women. So like, that's the thing. So here's the thing. Let's help you though, Mary. Yes, if your thyroid levels go from low thyroid, hypothyroidism, to higher thyroid, hyperthyroidism, yes, that can cause hair loss. No doubt about it. If you overstimulate the thyroid, yes, it can cause hair loss. Okay, so now the other equation to this is you started using testosterone. Well, the number one reason for hair loss is a conversion from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. The number one reason, number one reason, 90% of men who do lose their hair is from a conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And so if I was a betting person, which I'm not, I'll go to Las Vegas, but I won't bet any money. I'm not that kind of guy. Like I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a numbers and database person and, and data person, and I know that the house always wins. You know, some people win, and that's great, but I'm, I'm not that individual. So here's the thing. Um, the only way you know is to actually 
reduce, work with your endocrinologist. I'm not telling you to stop on your own uh, one of those products or take a DHT blocker. But again, I'm not giving you medical advice, medical diagnosis, medical treatment plan, or medical cure. But those are the main reasons. So please do look into that. There are other reasons as well. But again, like using Occam's razor, one of these two. You started using these two different types of medication. And believe me, hormone replacement therapy is medication. So if you're doing that and you're now having a greater conversion to DHT, very, very likely that could be one of the culprits, all right? So again, I always want people to work on this naturally. Find the underlying root cause. Why do you have low testosterone? Find the underlying root cause. Why do you have low thyroid? Because you can do that. Like, you absolutely can. And they don't have to deal with the side effects of all these medications. Okay. And the best thing to do always is run the big five. I, I know not everyone can do it, so I get it. I understand that. But if you can, it's the best thing that you can do. All right, Fiona's up next. Good morning. I would love for you to review the book Glucose Revolution by Jesse Enchuspe. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's a very easy to read book, and it would be great to hear your thoughts on the author's approach to reducing glycemic variability. All right, I've actually talked about the Glucose Revolution before. Um, I know the premise of the book. Basically, you are front-loading your meal with higher thermogenic foods, foods that are not going to cause a spike in blood sugar. And if you eat foods that are going to be higher on the glycemic index that would typically spike blood sugar, you're going to have those towards the end of the meal. The overall philosophy is correct. There's no doubt about it. I've talked about that uh, many, many times. I uh, use the same practice forever in my body transformation-based practice. This is, again, no offense. Like, I, I'm sure the book is fantastic. I really do. This is not new information. But it's good. I mean, it's good to get it back out there. The problem is, it does not mean it's very good food digestive combining wise. So people might not get the spike in blood sugar, but they could end up with digestive issues. Because if you start stacking um, higher glycemic foods on lower glycemic foods, and they start to ferment in the stomach, which does happen, then you end up with digestive, digestive issues, putrefaction, um, and potentially bacterial overgrowth. So again, like my recommendation is to understand food combining. I have many podcasts on that. And don't always combine these higher glycemic foods with not. And it's okay. Like, again, if you're a balanced, healthy individual, you can eat fruit by itself. Like, uh, you can. You, but it's considered energy-based food, right? So, like, if you exercised or you're lower blood sugar in the morning and you need glucose, like, glucose isn't the enemy. Our body needs it. Without it, we die right? We have storehouses of it in our liver and in our muscles. So again, I would just, I get it. I understand, but I'm, I, I always go back to it. I'm big on foundational principles, right? Foundational principles of health. All right, let's take, uh, well, we're going to keep it at that for today, just because we are at our time. And then what I will do is pick up with Brad on our next episode. And he is asking about a long COVID and COVID-based um, nutritional supplement or nutrient. So we'll get to that next time. Uh, I appreciate you, as always, tuning in to the show, subscribing to the show. That means the world to me. Leaving a review. I read every single one of your reviews uh, because honestly, like that that's the fuel, right? That is, that's what keeps me going each and every day. I record shows and, uh, and I truly do love this. So I appreciate you. I thank you. And I'll be back tomorrow with our second Cabral House Call of the weekend. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.